Hey guys, Jeff here from besttechie.com. Today we're going to be talking about how to organize and manage your movie library on macOS. I have a really cool app I want to show you guys today. It's called iFlix. It's available in the Mac App Store. You can also get it um, through Set App, which is a subscription style uh, service like Netflix, but for apps. It runs at nine, uh, $9.99 per month for set app. If you would just want to buy the standalone app, though, it runs for uh, $35 in the Mac App Store. But today we're going to be showing you iFlix. So iFlix is really cool. I like it for a number of different reasons. It, it edits metadata. It does a whole bunch of uh, file renaming. It can organize your, your, your movie library really, really fast and efficiently. It can even convert files that don't play on iTunes like MKV. Uh, to an M4V, uh, you know, MP4 type file that will play in iTunes and on your iPad. Uh, and it, and uh, in my experience with using it so far, when it converts those types of files, the, 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 there's no loss in quality. If there, if there is, it's extremely little, not noticeable at all. It does a really, really high quality job at converting the the files um, to a to a file playable in iTunes or on your iPhone or uh, iPad. So, or Apple TV for that matter. So, what I'm going to do now is run you over here. I'm going to show you how to use the app and uh, let's go into it. So, right here we have the iFlix app. As you can see, it's a very basic app. Uh, there's no video loaded in it currently. I'm going to load a video up in it just a moment. But you have all these options up here you can see. Um, but let's load a video into the app so, so we can actually see how it works. So I have right here a file uh, that, I, that I ripped of the, the original Fast and the Furious from 2001. So as you can see, the first thing it did, this file completely ripped, brand new rip, has no metadata at all whatsoever. Uh, associated or attached to it. So what the first thing you do is when you pull it into the app, it'll start loading. It may take a couple, you know, a couple seconds or so, maybe up to a minute. I usually usually it's pretty quick, but it'll pull all this data that it can get um, based on the name of the file. And and there you go. As you can see, it pulled the Fast and the Furious from 2001. And if you click on it, it shows you all the movie data. So this is a movie. But you can also do this with TV shows that you rip and things like that, or music videos as well. It, if, it, if it's a TV show, it'll add the season number as well as the episode numbers uh, to, to the metadata. It also adds the movie or show tagline. It gives you a description of the movie or the TV show episode. It also tells you when it was released. How cool is that? Gives you the, the ratings you, you know that, uh, that the movie received. The type of movie, genre, or TV show, you know, the current uh, content rating, PG-13 for this one. Uh, the definition of which the movie is, so this one's HD 1080p, but you know, if you have a 720p or standard definition, it'll get that as well. It even pulls the artwork, which is really nice. And of course, as you can see, it comes from, the artwork comes from the movie db.org. And what's even better is that it has all of the crew information right here. Look at that. It has all the cast and crew, all the directors, all the screenwriters, everything you need to know. Um, you can even add additional information here that if you wanted to, like what iTunes account or uh, you want, you know, if you wanted to um, add the iTunes, your iTunes account to it to make it even more special. But aside from that, uh, you can also so that's all the details that go that that it pulls and it's able to uh, attach to that file. You can also do a number of other things. So. I have mine set to a preset of update meta, metadata and rename. So this pre, this other previously, this file name was long and, and uh, you know I just typed in a bunch of stuff, um, and now it's going to rename the file uh, to the Fast and the Furious 2001, so I can easily understand what that file is, what movie that is. It's also going to add it to iTunes once it's once it's done with the metadata information. And if you had an MKV, for example, that uh, you were converting, you can even delete the uh, the source file if you were, in this case, con running a conversion on it, uh, and and then just keep the new file. On top of that, it'll you can set it to a specific directory or the current location that it's in. And um, yeah, so it's really cool. So I I love this app. It's so nifty. Uh, again, it also shows you breaks everything up to the chapters. So you have all the chapters here. And you can optimize it in any way you like. I just keep the defaults here. 
They tend to work very well. I've had no issues with any of these defaults. Um, but if you wanted to, just so quickly, you can set different presets. You can, you know, for for how you want uh, to optimize it, if at all. Uh, I just have it update and rename it. However, if it is an MKV or a different type of file that is not compatible with iTunes, I just have it convert to a standard iTunes file. Um, there's also settings. There's also uh, additional preferences you can select, as you can see here. So you can set the preset that you want uh, by default. You can also set the destination. You can have it delete the source files by default if you want. You can also have it added to iTunes by default. All those things I have. I like those. You can even add what's called a watch folder. So whenever you add, if you have like a folder like I do for all my movies, I don't have one set. But if I were to rip something new and I wanted to have it add uh, automatically and, and, and have iFlix automatically run, when new when when I opened it when when new content was there you can add this as a watch folder and it will do that for you. There are additional rules you can set um, on file load if you want to add the 720p 1080p tag. I like to do that. Um, you can also after as it, as I mentioned set the file name of the movies and TV shows. Again, you can do that. Uh, and you can also add additional rules after processing. You just simply hit add rule and you go through the steps here. It's very, very straightforward, very, very simple. So then once you have all your settings um, picked and, and, and you're happy with them, all you have to do then is hit start. And then what's going to happen is, as you'll see, it will add the metadata. So I'm going to do that and hit start. It's very, very fast. Conversions are also very, very fast. There's no conversion going on here that's just simply adding metadata, but it's very, very fast. Um, usually, it, you know, it could finish within a couple seconds or so. And then once it's done, you'll see that it's been completed. It'll have the little check mark. And that's it. Now it's been added to my iTunes music uh, movie library, and I can go from there and watch the movie. It's pretty great. So yeah, that is iFlix. I hope it helps. I hope it helps you figure out a great way to organize your movie library on Mac OS. Again, it's available in the Mac App Store for $35, or I will have a link to you can uh, go to get uh, for that, but also I'll have a link where you can sign up for Set App, which is also a great service, has lots of apps for just $9.99 a month. Um, super, super, val super value uh, oriented. Uh, it's like, again, like Netflix, but for apps, uh, specifically for Mac OS. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And remember, remember, take care of your computers.